When you're choosing the right tool to start designing a beautiful looking website, there can be a ton of options to choose from. Out of all those options, it seems two specific website builders have become incredibly popular in the last couple of years. Those two options being Webflow and Figma. Both of these platforms have their own advantages and disadvantages that we'll be covering in this video. We'll be going over everything you need to know about both of these platforms from their features, ease of use, and the technology that they allow you to utilize. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear idea of which of these two platforms is right for you and your web design experience. Not only that, but you will also get you access to some of the best deals possible when it comes to getting started with both of these platforms. For instance, if you want to get started with Webflow, make sure to use the link down in the description of this video. When you click that link, you'll be brought to a page that looks like this. As you can see, to get started, it's absolutely free to get started, so we just have to click this blue button in the top right here. Once we click that button, we'll then be taken to this page where we can either enter in our email address or sign in with Google and hit continue. Once we've hit continue, we'll then be asked to make a quick password. We'll then hit the create account button. Once we've done all this, we'll then be taken straight into Webflow. And the first thing it will ask us is to tell us the name that we want under this account. So in this instance, I'm just going to enter in my first and last name. Once I've done that, I'm then going to hit the continue button. After I've done that, then Webflow will ask me, who do I want to build websites for? Am I building websites for myself, my company, or for clients as a freelance or an agency? For this specific video, I'm going to say that I'm creating for myself. After I've done this, I'm then going to hit the continue button. The next thing it will ask me is whether or not I'm a student. And in this instance, I'm going to say no. What type of site are you looking to build today? I can either build a business site, an e-commerce site, a portfolio, a blog, or other. For this specific website, I'm going to just say that I'm building a business website. And then finally, it will ask me, are you interested in hiring someone to help build your site today? I'm going to go ahead and say no thank you. Once we've done that, we can then hit the finish button, which will then take a short time to load here, and it will take us to the final page where we can actually start building our website. Now, first things first, as you can see in the top left here, it'll say get started with Webflow. You can take a two-minute simple tour that will kind of help you learn everything. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you guys how to do that anyway. So all we have to do here is hit the exit button. We're then going to exit the tutorial. And as you can see, it will now either get started with a blank site or a template that Webflow already offers. For the sake of this video, just to show you guys the best way to get started, we're going to go ahead and use one of their templates. As you can see, Webflow has a ton of different templates that you can choose from. Now for the sake of minimalism and simplicity, we're going to go with the business starter template. We're going to hit the select button here. We're going to name this website, Kyle's awesome website and hit create site. Now it'll take a few moments to load here. And once it fully loads, we'll then have access to a fully editable template that is very easy to edit. And boom, here we are. This is inside of our template here. Again, we can zoom out or zoom in depending on how much we want to actually view this overall template. We also obviously can drag and drop most of this stuff and it's very easy to edit. Let's say I wanted to edit the title of this website. I simply just double click here and start typing away. As you can see, I'm just going to type my website here. Let's even say I wanted to change the font here. I can simply select all of this and change it to a bold font or an italic font. And if I want to edit the font family itself, I can simply go over to the right here and go down to where it says topography. I can then change this from Montserrat to any of these other fonts that look good. I'm going to go with open sans. Also, if I wanted to move this title option around, I simply just hold drag and drop and it will snap into place on the different parts of this template. I can also go up here to this top section here and edit any of these items, whether it's this business tagline or any of these buttons. As you can see on the left here, we also have a host of other options. We have the layers panel where we can see kind of all the specific items and elements we're working with, as well as other helpful things like our assets or even these style selectors themselves. We also have things like footers and components. And we also have the settings where we can actually mess around with a lot of the settings for localization, backups, interface, and a host of other things. In general, I think Webflow is extremely intuitive and easy to use. It's a platform that lets you drag and drop like most other website editors, but it gives you a lot more custom features that you can actually utilize. Plus some really handy no code features that you can also utilize for making custom code on your website. This can be helpful to make your website actually stand out from the rest of them and actually look like a custom built website that wasn't utilized inside of a website editor. Now that was most of everything you need to know about Webflow, but what about its direct competitor, Figma? When it comes to getting started with Figma, make sure to use the link down in the description so you can actually start using it. Once you hit the link down in the description below, you'll be brought to a page that looks like this where you can get started for free. Now, just as a caveat, one of Figma's main design functions is the fact that you can utilize it as a design tool. Figma is essentially a direct competitor to popular design tools like Adobe Illustrator or even Photoshop. However, this is much more meant for website building and it's really good for building entire website function inside of the actual tool itself. The first thing we wanna do is enter in an email address and enter in a password to create an account. Once we've done that, we'll then check our inbox and then confirm our email. Now that we verified our email, we'll then be asked what our name is and then we can enter in simply whatever name we would like to put here. I'm just gonna put my actual name. And also just to mention, we can completely skip this with the skip option down here if you don't wanna enter in any of these details. For the sake of 
this video and for time purposes, we're going to skip all this personal information. The next thing it will ask you is what kind of work do you want to do? We'll just say we're doing marketing. It'll also ask you to describe the work. We'll just say we're at an agency. It'll also ask me if I want to collaborate with anyone. And I'll say that, no, it's just me. Once you've entered in all this information, you'll then be taken to the design page where you can start designing your website. Now, when it comes to the plan you want to choose, you can either choose between the starter plan or the professional plan. The starter plan is free, but you do have a limited amount of features. The professional plan is $12 a seat for your whole team. And for the Fig Jam board, it's only $3 a seat. But with this plan, you get things like unlimited projects, unlimited files, unlimited pages, and a host of other details. For the sake of this video, I'm going to go with a starter plan since it's pretty much free to use and very easy. Now that we've done all of that, we are officially inside Figma's design portal. As you can see, this is what typically it will look like when you first get logged in with Figma. It'll give you a short little tutorial with a couple of file pages that you can play around with and test things out on. Now, in order to actually design your website in the first place, it's actually a lot easier than you think. We'll simply go up to a blank part here on this top part of the Figma file, click the rectangle tool in the top left here, and draw out a simple rectangle that is the desired size of our web page, which as you can see is displayed at the bottom there. As you can see, we now have a fully functioning rectangle that we can make some edits to. Over on the left here is the layers panel, and this is how you're going to edit things on a more minute, finely detailed basis. To actually edit this rectangle in the first place, we can simply either right click it and have a host of options here, or we can head over to the right here and click this fill option and change the color. Let's say we want the background of this website to be kind of a pastel red. So there's our background of this website. Now we can start designing this even further. We can go back to the shape tool and we can basically add a section to the top here that can be our website header. Once we've done this, we can then start adding our guides, sections, and even titles. As you can see, I'll click the text editor option here and drag out a text box that I want for the title. There's our text box. I can then start typing whatever I would like inside of this text box. Now, as you can probably see, the text is super small here. We would like to make it bigger. In order to do this, I'm going to simply select the whole text with command A, or you can drag to select it. I'm going to head over to the right side here where it says text, head down here to the size option, and then size up this text to whichever size I would like. As you can see, our complete gibberish is now the right size, and it looks good, obviously, in the middle. We can even just type that out so it's even better of a example. If we actually want to center this, we can then head over here and click the center option, which will then center that title. And from here, the world is pretty much your oyster. You can design your website any way you like and really have a host of different options to choose from. Figma is extremely freeing in its design principles, and it's very similar to Adobe Illustrator if you've ever used it. If you haven't used it though and you're unfamiliar with design software, it's still very accessible to complete beginners. Now when it comes to actually comparing these two platforms and which one I would use on a day-to-day -day basis for my own design needs, I think it depends. What it mostly depends on is the overall experience that you have with designing websites and inside of design software in general. If you're somebody who likes drag and drop editors and everything to work inside of the same platform, Webflow is definitely going to be a solid option. If you're somebody who likes to design things and get a really custom feel for everything on your website, Figma is super solid. One of the things you need to keep in mind with Figma though is that you don't have immediate access to publish this website. You have to export this design file in a desired format for whatever website builder you end up using. After you've exported this design file, you then can import it into whatever website builder you have and actually get started with building. Let me know down in the comments below which of these two design softwares you want to get started using and also let me know which one of these you've used in the first place. Make sure to use the links down in the description below to get started because that's how you're going to get access to the best possible deals and discounts. Also make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe so you never miss any of our new videos. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.